The proposal by the United Kingdom and Ukraine, joined by the United States, Canada, Australia and other countries, was to suspend Russia or even expel it from Interpol. It was met, by, met with opposition by East and West alike, and I think for good reason. Russia is critical in the fight against international crime. And still, Russian diffusion requests are now first scrutinized by Interpol's headquarters in Lyon, a procedure normally reserved only for red notices. Russia and its allies, the most notable example is possibly Kazakhstan, they are notorious for abusing Interpol and more generally international law enforcement cooperation and treaties, abusing them. These countries, Russia, Kazakhstan and others, leverage these goodwill instruments to snag dissidents on the run, settle scores with adversaries and send a chilling signal to would-be opponents and critics. Family members are also targeted. No one is exempt. No one is spared. Russia and its ilk are not loath to fabricate so-called evidence. It's known locally as compromat. <laughs> it's replete with faked documents and false witnesses. I know an example is the Pevsky murder case in an extradition request filed with Bulgaria in 2014, where the entire case was fabricated from A to Z. <laughs> there was no murder, actually. Invasion of Ukraine and the assassination attempt of Alexei Navalny, the prominent Russian opposition figure, cast Russia's growing thuggishness and rampant lawlessness in stark relief. The murderous kleptocracy that took over the state, headed by the thug and psychopath Vladimir Putin, is hell-bent on egregiously misusing the country's access to the international system of crime fighting. Extraditing to Russia anyone who has voiced anti-Kremlin and pro-peace opinions amounts to sending them back into a hellish system of certain torture, and usually worse than torture, Nuff said. In a slew of recent cases in various EU countries, uh, European Union countries, and in the United Kingdom, extraditions were denied, citing the following reasons. Number one, significant ongoing problems with the independence of the judiciary, both lawyers and judges in Russia as per the report by the UN, United Nations, Special Rapporteur. Number two, abysmal conditions of detention in the Russian Federation. Number three, recurrent and systemic breaches of articles three, five, six, and 13 of the European Convention of Human Rights, ECHR. Violations of article 22 of the UN Convention Against Torture and, and breaches of Article 3, um, 2 of the European Convention on Extradition, degrading and inhumane treatment in Russian detention centers and prisons, and the likely denial of a fair trial. A fourth reason given for denying extradition to Russia, Russia does not respect warranties and guarantees that it provides regarding the rights of extradees Russia refuses to allow independent monitoring of its adherence to such assurances. Number five, Russia ignores rulings by the European Court of Human Rights and is no longer a member of the Council of Europe, having been effectively expelled in March 2022 following its aggression against Ukraine. And finally, Russia announced its intention to denounce the European Convention of Human Rights to reintroduce the death penalty, capital punishment, even for what would be considered in the West freedom of speech offenses. Russia's botched transition to so-called capitalism helped to enrich and empower Russian criminals. 
These criminals formed networks throughout the industrialized developed West, including in the United States, European Union, and the United Kingdom. There's no, there's no denying this. I'm not, definitely. <laughs> Interpol, Europol, and extraditions are foundational tools in the never-ending fight against transnational crime. So it is a crying shame that Russia and its allies have tainted these instruments to the point of rendering them dysfunctional. One possible solution would be the creation of a specialized ad hoc and ad interim body, at least for the duration of the war in Ukraine. This institution will comprise representatives from Russia and from the West. The remit of such an organ would be to review Russian cases before they are transformed into diffusion requests, red notices, or extradition requests. The seal of approval of such a committee, unbiased, neutral, objective committee, the seal of approval of such a body is likely to facilitate actually the apprehension of real criminals by providing courts outside the Russian Federation with an opinion that, or a judgment that is unbiased regarding the merits of cases, prima facie evidence, as well as compliance with international treaties such as the ECHR. Russia, on its part, should consent to international monitoring of its detention facilities, monitoring of its judicial processes and police procedures. This is the only way to make sure that Russia keeps its word when it vows to abstain from political prosecutions, inhumane and degrading treatment, and torture. In due time, hopefully, Russia could reintegrate with the international community and with the European family. But until that utopian time comes, we cannot and we should not suspend the war on crime, of which Russia is a vital part. We just need to make sure that when Russia says it's fighting, it is fighting crime, it is not being the criminal itself.